again and welcome to Vance Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And thanks for tuning in. Uh, August. We were just saying, how did that happen? It's they... hot. There's a tropical storm coming. Yeah. It's going to rain. Um, the dog's on the calming, cha- you know, little yeah. bites for the afternoon. Oh. Yeah. So yeah, luckily, Jenny Jenny does bark at just about everything. And we've decided that um, she barks and then doesn't know why she's barking. <laughs> because she gets so upset about things. But I don't think she knows even what started it. And then she can't. So, like, you have to, yeah. Yeah, Nellie's not a big barker, really. I mean, if she sees, like, a dog outside, yeah. you know, she might. But, like, it's squirrel, she doesn't no, or whatever. Too- but she has that uh, panic attack yeah. thing with the weather. So she starts hyperventilating. Yeah. And, actually, you know, think about it. I mean, it's early. By the time you see this, the storm will already probably be rolling in. But, um, yeah, I saw a post on Matt Mayberry <laughs> reminding people to take in their political signs so that they're not blowing around the neighborhood. I'm like, oh, oh. I should go home and take down my political signs. So I am very, very, very seriously considering taking the position that uh, yard signs are garbage for the environment and we should stop doing yeah, it it'll in never general. Happen, though. Because um, I don't like them along the roadside. I'll be honest. I, I but I, that's I, the only place you can see them. So when you uh, have it with with you know reaching out to your friends and supporters in the neighborhood and stuff. I mean, things have become so politicized yeah. that there are a lot of people who won't put who anything. are like, ah, I, I don't actually want to get stoned by so my neighbor. I, I, I have the advantage of being in Ward 10, and I say this to other candidates who are in different wards that have a different makeup of their streets. There, there are a couple spots where I could put signs randomly placed. They're really, we don't have one of those corners. We don't have those bits of neighborhood anywhere in War 10. So literally every time I put a sign out, it's on somebody's business property or their personal property. So I don't mind signs in my ward because it does make me crazy, like crazy. And I've probably followed suit and said, well, screw it. I'm going to put it there too. People put them on uh, the corner of Varney and South Main. There's CBS or not CBS, Walgreens is there. And they put them on the Walgreen yard. And I think... There's no way you got permission to put that sign on that property, and that's private property. And it bugs me because don't put signs places that, like, it's bad enough when people put them along the highway. Well, and or the, you could make the argument, I'm pretty sure the government claims uh, some kind of variance between some distance they, from your property to the sidewalk, and so you could say that's well, probably, probably uh, public. Like, my point is just, it's 2020. People still drive down Do, the street. Th- I know, but like, like genuinely, and, and maybe, you know what, guys, like send us a message right. at our Gmail, manchtalk at gmail.com and, and help me out here if I've got this totally wrong. But like, if you're driving around and simply seeing like Carla Garrick for Senate and you're like, oh, I like those colors. Yes, I'm no, going to vote I, for that. See, person. Like, it doesn't really make sense to me. I don't think it's me. that. I do think that people, and we, it depends. People, like, okay, I have a very uh, visible house on Varney Street, and everybody knows that I'm a Republican, and I'm conservative and pro-liberty and all this stuff. So when they, if you're driving, if you're already a voter, right, you're already a voter, you're already going to vote Republican, but maybe you don't know who to vote for in a primary, and you see that I've got Matt Mayberry sign on my lawn instead of Matt Mowers. That just makes somebody go, well, Tammy likes Matt Mayberry. I guess, you know, if I don't have any idea of the difference between them and I'm not going to take the time, the amount of time that they took was acknowledging that that person always has good candidates on their lawn and now they have that. Name. So I, and I just think neighborhood wise, like, I don't think like there's always this ongoing discussion in politics, whether, you know, signs don't vote, but then you'll get a lot of people who've worked on many campaigns who go, oh, but I think they do to a degree. See, but this is, uh, so once again, this isn't actually data. It's just people's feelings about of course. things. And when, when like when we're operating on, I, I think I said this in 2018 too, right? When we were setting up, uh, you know, sine waves and this kind of stuff. It, it seems ritualistic. It is, I think. And and it is ritualistic, but it's also like ritualistic from the 1700s. I, know, I do think. <laughs> and so it's kind of like really, I feel like we've evolved beyond, and I feel like it's a waste of time. Well, like it uh, like feels so much that, of, but of my well, life. Listen to what is, you just said. I feel like it's a waste of time. We're not even. No, but it's my time and it is, is. a waste of time. But I look like at for it. me to spend a week going around 
to everyone and being like, hey, will you put my yard sign out? Is like, like for what purpose is that like a good use of time? I could have written six essays in the time I did that or, you know, or, or made phone calls I just or you, fundraised or like, it's just, it seems, but I, I know, do, it seems I like think, we may as well be sending smoke signals. I do <laughs> think from a candi candidate perspective, it does seem like it's a tough, you know, it is time consuming. There's a lot of things that candidates do that are time consuming, but from a voter perspective, I have heard from people when you say, you know, well, who are you going to vote for so-and-so? And they say, yeah, I've never heard of them. And because they never heard of them, they're not inclined to fill in that part of the ballot. So name recognition, like you have better name recognition now than say five years ago. I have better name recognition now than five years ago. More people are inclined to fill in the dot for someone that they at least either A, right. heard right. of, or I, I, B, I don't feel that they have support from other people. I people don't like to be on the winning team. Disagree with that. I am quibbling about what creates name recognition, and should we still be doing things from the 17 and 1800s, no, like pla but not everybody, not everybody and standing with signs and doing, you know. I mean, obviously, talking to a voter one-on-one, -on -one, in right, my opinion, is the best. far more yes. effective than seeing somebody sign. But we can look, we could say this about anything in campaigning. You can do mail. There are people who literally take the mail and throw it in the trash and never look at it. <laughs> I don't so, even throw it in the trash. My mail slot right. goes to a well, trash that's what can. I mean. so, so we could debate whether or not mail is effective. We could say, well, you could do you know social media and targeted ads. But we could debate whether or not you ever click on them. You see, but I don't think we can debate that. There is actual insights and statistics that will tell you X amount of people that's saw only, it and whatever, right? So if we could do that with, I don't know, a sign if wave. If there was or, a way to do that if, every for, time. So for me, it's just isn't. literally... Like everything has to have some kind of cost benefit analysis to it. But right? I don't and think so, you can so, in an election. You either so win or you lose, though. That's the only cost. Right. But cost I'm just saying, analysis. why are we still doing these things that we can't show work or don't work? So there's this belief system that's caught up in it that, look, I mean, the bottom line is. I don't like doing the sign part, right? Like I don't, it just- Get somebody it, else to do it. That's what I always say. Get somebody else to do your signs. Right, but I'm just like, it, you know, like I'm like, so I live on a cul-de-sac. I have five supporters. Yeah. All my neighbors support me. Right, there's no point in so putting signs So what, am I gonna put out like five signs no. on my street? No, but- No, so it's just, it's, I, I- I know. You know, and then last time in 2018, I mean, there were these vicious people going around pulling up all my signs. Yeah spray painting them yep. with very ugly words yep, that I we agree. can't say on the show. And I was just like, so why? Now you're just giving fodder to like mean bad people Well, and people it's funny well. because I think, um, I don't know if it was last time, it might have been, it was either the last time or the time before, I think it was last time, somebody spray painted something, hmm, I don't know. I could picture this, where it was. I know my sign was there and Dan's sign was there. I don't remember if it was four years ago when it was Trump or if it was a governor's candidate, whatever. And somebody spray painted like over the whole thing. And somebody goes, oh, we should go take it down. I go, no, no, I'll just leave it there. Because I'll tell you, that sends a completely different message. And there is, there is an amount of people who when they see you being attacked and they vis you know, visibly, then they actually feel like, I think I'm gonna vote for that person because they didn't do anything to that. So there's like, there's a, there's it's a, not a science. Politics <laughs> is not a science. Elections is not a science. It's, it, it just what it is. It's, it's, yeah, it seems like voodoo at this so, stage. Well, and it's, yeah. So on that, on, on a similar note, not really, but. Did you see, oh, I've just gotta say this before you segue is, uh, did you see the article today in the newspaper where they're talking about what we're gonna do with schooling come fall? I, I, and, and we're currently at this hybrid model. And in the hybrid model, I mean, I posted this to my Facebook today because it made me laugh out loud. Conveniently, all remote but, learning will happen statewide on Fridays. See, I don't see that, though. I don't know. Maybe in some place else, because in the article I read for Manchester, I think that would have been Nashua. Okay. Because I was like, wait, where did she see the Friday thing? So in Manchester, they're talking about, this is for middle school and elementary, I think. 
Um, group A would be Mondays and Tuesdays, work online Thursdays and Fridays. Group B would be work remotely Mondays and Tuesdays, in person on Thursdays and Fridays, and everybody would work remotely on Wednesday so that the theory is there would be people in the school for two days. They'd clean the schools on Wednesday. There'd be a different group in school on two, Thursday and Friday. They'd clean the schools on the You weekend. know what I'm just going to predict here as well? Is we predict- are next, by next year, we are going to have a massive problem with people who can no longer use antibiotics yes. to stop diseases. Mm-hmm. Because when you over... Over sanitize. Um, sanitize becomes- stuff what? like in hospitals and old age homes where people no longer have its staff resistance. Yeah. Um and I I, I mean I'm I mean, very been, troubled by a, a lot there, of this. This is not a COVID specific thing. This is a science specific thing. So year think go back <laughs> years. So if you have a septic system, they say don't use antibacterial Mm -hmm. soap because your septic system needs that bacteria to break down the stuff in your septic system. So it's like if you have a septic, you're very conscious of it. Then, you know, over the years, you hear tons of reports about, I don't know, the, the antibacterial soaps that we're all washing our hands with might actually be helping these various strains of virus, um, change and become more virulent. So naturally, when we have this new virus that we're all worried about, the first thing we do is antibacterial everything. And it is concerning because we won't know it in October. We'll know it five years from now where we're like, I mean, I eh, think that maybe I, we shouldn't have done that. Well, it's just, I think generally, I mean, it's the same challenge we actually have with people's physical bodies, right? Mm-hmm. Like there's a lot of science coming out now that talks about your gut. Yeah flora and and your gut health and how inter uh intertwined truly like your gut flora and your gut is with your brain right and that those two things it's funny because when you go back and you actually look at you know from from uh uh hippocratic what what, hippocrates what would you say like the the old guy from way back when right like they would actually talk about hippocrates yeah i don't know know how to say it but like i know it's the hippocratic oath yeah so i think it's hippocrates which is weird Um, or that just sounds right you know which is of course first do no harm you know and i think we can all (laughs) maybe remind ourselves of that but there's a lot of science that's coming out now that's saying so many people who have uh, compromised immune yeah. systems, which is part of what we're seeing with this entire response to this mm-hmm. situation, right? And it's something I've talked about a lot and I've certainly blogged about is, you know, if everyone's so scared of dying, it's like, but how are you living? Right. How healthy are you? What kind or of choices e- are you even making Even if you were making life? crappy choices before, are, are you, you doing changing things now? now? Because I can tell you, if you expect me to wear a mask, I'm going to expect you to make some changes in your well, life I think, too. Yeah, but mm. I mean, even, even just there's there's not enough um discussion i don't even think about how like from experts to t- discuss with people how you can better oh no we saw what system. the experts do fauci will tell you to wear a mask now and then go hang goggles. out and you know just do what he wants well you so. know what frustrated me too <laughs> yesterday so I, I posted a thing on facebook this morning about I was reading articles about um, a school district in Georgia, and I'm just so tired of the headlines, and we're sharing them here in New Hampshire. WMUR is sharing headlines Mm -hmm. about things happening in other states, and it is just clickbait. I'm sorry. I agree. It's And they're misleading, and you think, what? And I'm I'm one of those people who, even if it's something that I think is clickbait, I still read through because I'm like, (laughs) well, I want to make sure maybe I'm missing something. If there really is this crazy outbreak someplace, okay, well, I want to know that because I'm basing my decisions on actual things, not just on my feelings or on the feelings of other people. So Except for sign placements and (laughs) sign waves. (laughs) Um, So I go down and I'm reading and the story isn't quite exactly what the headline was and so then it makes me google the the school district in georgia that they're talking about and the story just goes off in a different thing and i get so frustrated because i'm like people don't think things through it's not even that they don't think it through tammy i think there is a active they're they're trying suppression of information there is an active propaganda 
being uh, uh, being done. The fact that anyone who has a dissenting opinion yeah, there's is a lot being happening. censored should be a giant, well, giant red flag the, for any red-blooded American. What, what because I, the point of the way we function as a society is that we debate things. We talk about ideas and we come up with the best solutions because we're open to say this versus yeah. this. And now we have created, in the past five months, we have created an acceptable benchmark yeah. that says, oh, only the experts are allowed certain their opinion, experts. certain experts, and we will actively suppress and censor information and that does not fit the propagandistic government statist narrative. Well, I get frustrated because somebody said, you know, I somebody commented that, well, there's definitely being uh, misinformation or, you know, this agenda being spread. And I commented back and I said, and unfortunately I see it on both ends of the spectrum, which makes me even more infuriated because like, for example, yesterday, and I had to go and Google and see if it was real, somebody posted, um, a picture of the funeral of the civil rights guy, uh, Representative um, Congressman Lewis, right? And there is a picture, supposedly from the funeral, with nobody with masks on. And I thought, geez, that's really bad. Like, that's crazy. So then I took it upon myself to go and I Googled, you know, John Lewis funeral. And there's pictures. And I zoom in and everybody's got masks on. And I'm like, so somebody somewhere took a picture of a different funeral at a different time before the virus and shared it as if it was. And I'm like, okay, but see, you're not helping here. You're not helping if you're spending. So, so the question there becomes, one, is that incompetence, which is uh, often the case. It is. People or are lazy and they it, don't check or anything. Or is it purposeful misleading? I think now, it's a I bit of say, both. right, it's, that was what I was going to say, is it doesn't really matter. The point is, it's not accurate information that is being given to people in order to make informed right. decisions, right? If we want a society that has less government in it, then we want people to actually have the information necessary to make good decisions. And you can't do that when you start silencing mm. the people you don't like or agree with or anything. Like, I am just one of those people. I will debate anything. I have no sacred cows. I really don't have skin in the game. The mask makes me feel sick. I'm a healthy person. I don't see a reason why. Mm -hmm. If I lived in New York City... I might feel differently. I might feel differently. Right. So we have to remember, we're also looking at all these issues from like a very nationalistic standpoint. Yes. But the point is, you know, Laconia, New Hampshire is entirely different, or Berlin, New Hampshire is entirely different to downtown Hong Kong or New York City or, or London Atlanta. Right. or Atlanta or anywhere right. else. And so we have to stop with this sort of like socialized, there's so, only one size fits all solution to things because that's not true either. We are fortunate in New Hampshire. We're so lucky that we live here in this great state that has, you know, enough space and has healthy enough people and people who care about... Yep. You know, and, and you don't care about their neighbors. We've been doing a lot of stuff for yep. our neighbors just well, because and, some of them are you know, older and they can't go um, out or don't want to. Back to the opening of the schools thing, for those who don't read or don't do anything, I guess the schools in Manchester are being delayed opening till September 9th, which I think is fine. It's post Labor Day. Why we open before Labor Day is beyond me. But besides, so <laughs> Chris will there, be happy. Seems, <laughs> there seems to be this crazy. Um, narrative and i i'm gonna blame the teachers unions because i don't know who else to blame that we've got the teachers so riled up that they're gonna die and i mean it's not even where you hear okay if you're 60 years old and you're still teaching in a school i can understand you have a little bit of concern i get that concern i get it because we don't have hard facts on either direction right but when you're when i see things that say well you can't teach children if they're dead okay the children aren't dying let's just cut to the chase Kids are not dying. Kids are playing with other kids now. Kids go into Walmart, kids go into Aldi. If they were dying, they were... now you can look at the numbers and we're talking about different points of view. You know where I get my, my information on how many people have died or hospitalized in New Hampshire? New Hampshire Public Radio's website. They have, to me, the best up-to-date information in a visual format that can show me where we're at. We are not spiraling out of control in New Hampshire for what you, for those who care 
there has been nobody under the age of nine to, who has died, nobody between 10 and 19, and only one person between 20 and 29. The children in New Hampshire are not dying. And you can go and look at Atlanta in this county that I read about in this article today. The kids aren't dying there either. And can we also just once again, you know, no one wants to talk about this, but for the most part, this virus is very deadly to people who have comorbidities. Or are old, and, and, and which is a, well, co well, which well, is a comorbidity. comorbidity. So, so, and understandably, but, but with the elderly, it's generally also people who have cognitive health issues, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, heart disease, yeah. you know, uh, overweight, diabetes, like all these chronic lifestyle diseases. And so like, I'm just going to keep encouraging people, you know, as, as we, as we move through this, yep. as we, we start living life, we yeah, have to well, live life. Well, you have to live life and that you have to just, I mean, that's what I think we've both really continued to do right so so that's the self-reflection that needs to come in but the thing is you've got to find you've got to find out what's going to make you healthy and better mm. and and apply those things to your life make, you know make i've make said choices. this i've said this for many years right but when people say to me we need universal health care i'm like but are we asking the right question do we need universal health care or do we need to look at how we're living yeah. and make adjustments? You know, no one, no one, no one wants to hear the truth. But the truth is, you got to sleep more. You got to eat healthy. You got to leave the carbs. You got to leave the sugar. You can't continue to eat the way insane. that an average American eats and expect yourself to be healthy. So if you're worried about COVID, stop, stop. start with right. you. Go That's to, what I did. Make your That's what wait, you did. Make your Dunkin' Donuts coffee not look this color with sugar. I, I, it kills me. I'm like, they, they, with the sweetener and the sugars, and I'm like, oh, good but, Lord. But it's not even, I mean, even your milk. Like, I, I, I drink mil uh, almond milk or coconut milk based on sort of the keto diet and, and the good high fats that I yeah. try and get in. If you're not careful, Everything all of that has stuff sugar. has sugar in yeah. it too. So there's Start sugar. Read, read labels. You'd be amazed. You pick up ketchup. In you look at ketchup and you're like, corn syrup i don't need to I don't well need and the thing is i mean tomatoes are naturally high in sugar to right. start what with I, like you don't need to add it so i learned this very interesting thing um this week uh about why you know we have so much fructose high corn mm. syrup why all of that's in food and stuff so it turns out and i didn't know this before is um after world war ii i believe it was called urea but it was a nitrogen product that they used in bombs and they had a surplus so much they had a surplus and they were like oh what are we going to do with this surplus of bomb making stuff oh i know it's got Let's nitrogen it in, in we'll use it as fertilizer they use it as and fertilizer it on the soil it made the corn Sweeter. grow like bananas and like more, corn and, and like more. popcorn and then what do you do and then we had this corn surplus so then they said oh let's take this corn surplus and what can we do with all this extra corn so what they first did is they started feeding it to our cattle yeah cattle are ruminators they cows are not supposed to eat, eat corn, corn they they're eat supposed grass. to eat grass they eat the grass so that they poop on the field so that the fields stay clean like all of this is interrelated by all yeah. So the fact that Americans are fat and unhealthy is the government's fault because they made bombs in the war and that is where we've ended up. And if you're sad about the environment, that's also the government's fault because we could have picked clean nuclear, but no, the military was like, hey, why don't we build some more bombs? So, you know, when you look at all of these things, you have to actually look at all the puzzle pieces and go, what is the big picture? And I feel like both of us like look at that and go well here is the actual big picture so then it's like what are the solutions how do we fix Wait. from here to there and i will tell you guys it's not with more government so i have one little tidbit before we end the show um i read an article the other day um in the union leader because i read it every day now um, cause I subscribed cause I felt bad for them. But anyways, um, <laughs> I am a big proponent of the, old I, I know I newspaper. read the, the digital, so I see the paper, but I don't have paper because I just don't want all that paper at my right. house. But anyways, um, there was an article uh, about the Milliard Museum and I'm a big fan of the Milliard Museum. And, um, for those who've been here a long time, Dan doesn't remember this, but, um, 
Pandora sweaters. There used to be a big oh, sign yeah. on the mill and it said home of Pandora in this script lettering sweaters. Well, they when the mill changed hands, um, they took the sign down and it leaned up against the building for the longest time. And eventually the mill yard, um, you know, museum took, took it and everything. But the problem is, is I guess the words Pandora were pounded lead. So they disintegrated. It wasn't salvageable, sadly, because that would be nice to see right. in the Milliard Museum. But they decided to, that they wanted to do, take the original sweaters and put that in the museum. The dilemma was, is three of the letters are missing. <laughs> um, I think it was two E's and an S or something, right? Um, and like they said, they could have those letters manufactured. And I loved that they said this. They said, but we're not a fantasy museum. We're a history museum. So we actually <laughs> would like the actual letters. They made a plea. One of the E's showed up wow. in their walkway. And they are making a plea to the public that if you happen to have one of the letters from sweaters in the Pandora sign, um, no questions asked. The <laughs> Milliard Museum would like it. Oh, that's um, so I just thought that was really nice. I, yeah. I liked the comment that we're not a fantasy museum. We're a history museum. We'd like to have, we're not going to manufacture something. We're going to put the real thing. So if you know anybody who's got some really strange letters in their garage and you're like, hey, where'd you get that letter from? If it's from the Pandora sign, the Milliard Museum would like it. Um, but that's all I've got. Um, stay cool if it gets hot stay dry in the tropical storm that we're gonna have um you know it's august you still got a good month or so of summer don't don't let it you know waste away no it, and then remember if you are planning to vote in the primary be yep. sure to and you don't want to go out or you're concerned yep. be sure to ask for your absentee ballot you can do that at manchester it, nh.gov yep. uh there's a forum you need to send in so there's th there are a few you can steps. also go so i don't know what it's like at city hall that. these days but you can also go to city hall and vote you you can Absentee. do that um as well if you feel safe if you think that's better oh than okay so you can actually vote you could go early to, yes. at city so hall. you could go and fill out the form there and they'll give you your ballot you could fill out your ballot and give it back to them. Oh, wow. Okay. So you have lots of options, yep. but you know, we have Get the primary vote. coming up September 8th. And then of course the, uh, the big, big election in November. Ah. So, you know, keep checking out your options, but you know, don't forget about us. <laughs> you can vote for me in the primary, but I don't have a, ch I, the only challenger I have is Dan and you know, two <laughs> slots. So they're two safe. for one. <laughs> Anyways, that's all we got this week. Enjoy the summer. Thanks guys.